Welcome to Electron Line. Now let's take a look at our second quantum number for the hydrogen atom. It's called the orbital quantum number. Now for each energy level, there is a certain number of potential or possible quanta orbital quantum numbers. So let's define what we mean by orbital quantum number. It is defined as being associated with the various quantum mechanic angular momentum states an electron can have in each of the energy levels. So the orbital quantum number is associated with angular momentum of the electron. Now, in classical mechanics, the angular momentum is defined as the moment of inertia times the angular velocity. And for a point object, the moment of inertia is equal to mr squared, and the angular velocity is the velocity divided by the radius. Simplified, the angular momentum is mrv, and in classical physics, in classical mechanics, r and v can have any value possible. But in quantum mechanics, that's not the case. The radius is very well defined in a hydrogen atom. It can only exist, the electron can only exist at very specific orbits that are, have very specific radii. And the associated velocity of the electron is then also quantized very specific velocities for very specific orbits. So if the radius and the velocity is quantized for the electron in a hydrogen atom, then the angular momentum must be quantized as well. And that quantization is defined by the orbital quanta, quantum number L. Now, when n equals 1, L can only be a value of 0. When n equals 2, L can be 0 or 1. When n equals 3, it can be 0, 1, or 2. When n equals 4, 0, 1, 2, or 3, and so forth. In other words, L can have any value up to one less than the principal quantum number L. Now L defines the allowable magnitude of the angular momentum. So the angular momentum can have a certain magnitude and it can have directions. Now also think about it this way. If the principal quantum number is associated with a shell, the orbital quantum number is associated with a subshell. So for the first energy level, in shell K, L can only be 0, and L being equal 0 is associated with a subshell called S. When N equals 2, that's the shell called L, the orbital quantum number can be 0 or 1. If it's 0, it's associated with the subshell S. If it's 1, it's associated with the subshell P. Now where that is different, when it has a subshell p when l is equal to 1, that means there's three possible directions for the angular momentum. Remember, angular momentum is a vector, and so as the electron rotates, the, the axis about which it rotates can have a certain direction. So when l is equal to 1, there can be three possible directions for the angular momentum. For the third energy level, that is shell m, L can be 0, 1, or 2. When it's 0, it's associated with subshell S. When it's 1, it's associated with subshell P. When it's 2, it's associated with subshell, subshell 3, uh, D, I should say. In the subshell P, there's three possible directions for the angular momentum. In subshell D, there's five possible directions for the, for the um, angular momentum. So you can see that SPD, the subshells, define the number of orientations the angular momentum can have. So L is directly associated with the angular momentum of the electron in the, in the orbit of the, uh, of the atom. The value of L will be associated with the magnitude of the angular momentum and depending upon the value, it will also be associated with the number of possible directions of the angular momentum. And we're going to see how those are associated with the, with the uh, quantum number, and we'll see how they're actually calculated in the next video. We now just want to give you an overview of what L means. It's the orbital quantum number. It's associated with the angular momentum. The angular momentum is quantized. Therefore, it can only have quantized values or quantized magnitudes, and it can only have quantized directions. And so depending upon the value of L, which is associated with the subshell within the energy levels or the, the shells, and those subshells are associated with the number of possible orientations, and L is also associated with the number of possible magnitudes of the angular momentum. So if you understand that, we're in good shape. We'll go on to the next video to see how it's actually calculated and what that actually means from a more visual perspective. And that's how it's done.